everybody, and thanks for choosing to tune in to Everactive School's presentation on increasing an appetite for PE. You have the tools, we have the recipes. Uh, as you can see here, we are joined today myself. I am Adrian Chevert. I am a school health facilitator working out of our Edmonton office, and we also have... Chessa Peter. I'm here in Calgary, school health facilitator. And I'm Scott Bailey, also a school health facilitator in Calgary. Awesome. So we're just going to throw up a slide here just so you know, at any point in time after uh, today's video recording, you are welcome to reach out and get in touch with us, whether it's through Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or Instagram using the handle at everactiveab. Uh, you can also reach out to us through our generic email address, info at everactive.org. If you are in or near the Edmonton area and have any questions or want to reach out, feel free to email me directly, adrian at everactive.org. Or if you're more towards the south, uh, feel free to contact Scott. And if you're somewhere in the middle, you can just pick whether you want to go north or south. It's totally up to you. We would also like to acknowledge uh, that we are gathering here today from the traditional and ancestral territories across Alberta. We acknowledge the many First Nations, Métis and Inuit whose footsteps have marked these lands for generations. For their stewardship and teachings, we are grateful for the elders and traditional knowledge keepers who are with us today and those who have gone before us. May we all continue to walk together towards reconciliation. Everactive Schools is actually a special project of the Specialty Council through the ATA for Health and Phys Ed. We are currently funded by three different government ministries, but a lot of our work is also funded through grant applications. And one of our most significant funders currently is the Canadian Tire Jumpstart Charities Program. Feel free to reach out to us. We provide you with professional learning through workshops such as these. And if you visit our website, we have a boatload of resources that can help support you in your practice as well. So jumping into today's session, we are kind of bringing back a, a, a classic, the recipe card lesson plans. We published our recipe card lesson plans, our phys ed lesson plans for free on everactive.org. So we'd like to reintroduce you to that resource if uh, you've maybe used it before or if it's new to you. Uh, it does come from a few years ago, so we're also going to look at uh, just modifications that we can make for working with your students uh, and also in these uncertain times, uh, but hoping that there's going to be a focus on physical activity, well-being, uh, and really solid health and physical education as we do come back to school. And then, of course, to, to work some activity into an Everactive School session, you'll get to experience some sample activities from these recipe card lesson plans, one from each division, so K to three, four to six, seven to nine, and 10 to 12. And we'd encourage you to actually hit pause on this recording and try some of those activities if you can, uh, or take those opportunities to get a little bit of activity in your day. This next slide uh, is the Comprehensive School Health Framework. Um, it's uh, adopted across Canada through the Joint Consortium for School Health, and it is the foundation for everything we do at Everactive Schools. And so to maybe use it as an example uh, for returning to learn, if we look at the students being in the center of this model, we want to support healthy school initiatives for them, kind of regardless of what the direction that we get from the government may be. Uh, so these recipe card lesson plans, for instance, are a really good teaching and learning resource. And we hope that there's going to be really meaningful health and physical education happening. Uh, and we know that this group, we can all be advocates for the importance of that and importance of physical activity and, and well-being every day. So even if we're just making these resources available to other teachers, uh, that's using the Comprehensive School Health Framework. Adrian did a really good job of explaining all the different ways where you can engage with Everactive Schools, so hopefully you'll see us as a valuable partner. Policy is a little bit of the unknown right now, but some of the things that we are going to consider in this tutorial, in this video, are taking physical education outside and trying to do it in a physically distanced way. And that ties into the environments that we're creating uh, obviously the most important for our students is that we're creating safe, welcoming, fun environments where learning can really occur. 
as already alluded to, the recipe card lesson plans are now available on the Everactive Schools website for free. You can find them by going to everactive.org, uh, clicking on the resource tabs, and then looking for the physical education lesson plans. A lot of those uh, lessons are suited or can be adapted in a way that makes them safe uh, in terms of physical distancing or online delivery, um, depending on the context of uh, this upcoming school year, including some of the group activities. So if you kind of, if you see group activities pop up, don't immediately X them out. Um, let's look for ways that we can take those group activities and modify and adapt them. Um, and we will speak to some of that uh, in in upcoming parts of this presentation. Another really handy resource that you can find um, for free on the Everactive Schools website is uh, Practical Tips for Implementing Physical Activity. This provides suggestions or equipment swaps. So if students don't have a ball at home, what can they use instead? If they don't have bean bags at home, uh, what can they use instead? It's a, a really simple resource, three pages that you can share uh, with your colleagues as they're attempting to implement um, this, whether it's in the gym and every student needs their own set of equipment um, and we're having to get creative with what that looks like or um, we're looking at what students can use at home if some of their learning or a lot of their learning is happening in that home environment. How the recipe card lesson plans are set up is that they're intended to be super easy grab and go lesson plans. They are two-sided recipe card shapes They've got equipment lists on there, so what sorts of equipment you need. They've got supplemental resources. I will just note here that, um, as mentioned, the cards are a little bit older. Some of those resources may start to get a little bit outdated. Um, we recognize that the safety guidelines are um, from an older version. So just be mindful of that as you're using them and potentially they might be better served as inspiration or jumping off points for you to uh, utilize within the context of your own programming. So some of those supplemental resources are still gonna be live or you might just have to go um, looking for something else to suit uh, what you're up to. We also have the curriculum connections on there. So great for phys ed specialists, but also for those generalist teachers who might be facilitating phys ed for their students. Um, evidence of learning, so what are we looking and listening for as our students are completing this activity. Safety considerations, uh, and then we go into what the lesson looks like. So we start with a warm up. Um, so every card has a warm up on it that's suitable for that activity. From there, we go into our main activity, uh, and that will, <clears throat> excuse me, be on the back page, and that'll take up a majority of the back page. Um, and that will also include safety uh, guidelines as well. And then we'll finish with wrap it up. And that's the closing activity, um, consolidation of learning and oftentimes a cool down, reflection questions for your students so that we're really looking at all of those A, B, C, Ds of the phys ed curriculum. So let's get down to action. And we've selected a few sample activities uh, from each of the grade levels in the recipe card lesson plans. And as you'll see, uh, being teachers ourselves, we've kind of taken the core of that lesson and we've already started to modify it. And we know that you will do this beautifully because you know your students best. Uh, and hopefully this will be helpful in any context. For K to three, uh, our good colleague, Chris Fenlon McDonald, has taken a game called Foxtails. It's actually in the individual activities section as one of the warm-ups, uh, but it's totally applicable to the games domain of physical education, <clears throat> as a lot of K to three games really are working on spatial awareness and that's often delivered through tag games. This is a modification of a Foxtails tag. That's not gonna be appropriate right now to be handling a bunch of equipment. So we're gonna leave the tail behind and uh, Chris's daughter, Emma, has invented her modification, and it's called Emma's Shadow Tag. Have a look. We're going to play a game of Foxtail today, but we're going to modify the game a little bit. And in doing so, we're going to play a version called Emma's Shadow Tag.
if you have any questions about implementing that activity or you've got great ideas of your own, we'd love you to share that with us. So reach out by email or let's see some posts on our social media and make sure you tag at everactiveab. Moving into grades four to six, we're also gonna take it into the gymnasium here. So an activity where we can spread out, this comes from the individual activities domain and it's a fitness focused activity. It's called the sorting it out challenge. This is gonna engage students and this could be done in so many different ways, uh, but to engage students in the physical activities that they enjoy doing and sorting them into the domains of functional fitness. Lots of opportunity for reflection here and hopefully the students could even be documenting some of this uh, either pen and paper or digitally for you. Okay. We're going to update it with a couple of newer resources. So we're gonna use the most up-to-date Let's Warm Up poster that hits all four dimensions of functional fitness. And we're also gonna use, if you need a prompt for your students to start thinking about physical activities, our free download of Charades Relay. These are icons uh, for a whole bunch of different physical activities. Every student could easily have their own set or need be, they could definitely make their own. This is the sorting it out challenge from the recipe card lesson plans for grade four to six. And we're gonna add in a couple of new resources like our let's warm up poster. The idea behind the sorting it out challenge is to have students reflect on the three components of functional fitness. And on this poster, you can see a few of those categories. A little bit different, but great for warming up. So as a warm up, you could choose one to two from each column, put on some music and get going. What we're gonna do is get right into the activity. And every time you move back and forth, you're gonna choose a different aerobic movement. For the main activity, we're gonna use charades relays or have students brainstorm a list of activities that they enjoy. So six that I picked, dancing, figure skating, canoeing, monkey bars, ballet, throwing a frisbee. We're gonna make three spaces in the gym, one for strength, one for cardio, and one for flexibility, and just going to move those activities to the appropriate spaces. By the end of this activity, you've got a great opportunity for reflection on the activities that you enjoy doing, how they might relate to our components of fitness, and some ideas for building a personal training plan. All right, thanks Scott. So we're gonna take it now for uh, our uh, intermediate teachers, our grade seven and nine range. Uh, we chose to take a look at Hoops and Squish. It is in the games section of the recipe card lesson plan portfolio. With this activity, ideally, we're going to encourage being outside. Uh, you really, you're going to need some sort of a wall surface that allows an object to rebound off of it. And really what we're working on uh, to get things started with the warm it up is just to practice uh, trying to get your object into a target. The goal here is you're going to be sending your object off the wall and have it rebound into or onto the target. We definitely want to make it challenge by choice and we want to offer scaffolded opportunities so that our participants feel comfortable, feel safe and feel like they're having fun with however they choose to engage in the activity. So what we would always start with is have your target closer to the wall. As part of the warm up, what you want to do is just encourage your participants to move the target further away from the wall to incorporate that challenge of trying to have it rebound and then hit the target or get in the target. Squish is going to get interesting because depending on what our regulations are about social distancing, this is something you might want to modify as an individual only activity where your participants are trying to see how long they can rally continuously with a target in mind. Or what we can try to do is from a, um, a safe social distance, you can have uh, groups of two and you could perhaps even just box them in. So you identify where one person is, draw a little perimeter around them, have their partner six feet away, have a little perimeter around them, and then they can do the activity squish, but the goal is to try to remain in their box as they're also trying to strike the object. So again, get fun, get creative. And as I always suggest from my teaching experience, put it back on the students as well. Like Chessa said earlier, this, these are really just inspirations for you. 
but also see what your students have to say and what type of feedback they can provide you on ways that they would modify or adapt the game to make it more enjoyable as well as making it more challenging. All right, so moving on to grades 10 to 12, the recipe card lesson plans include uh, units for each of the five domains of the phys ed curriculum, and each of those units have six lesson plans. So I just wanna highlight um, the grades 10 to 12 individual activity recipe card lesson plans. Um, prepares you or provides some inspiration for creating a mini triathlon unit. Um, the unit centers around the essential question, in what ways can preparing for and participating in a triathlon enhance, enhance your mental, physical, and social well-being? Obviously, uh, not every school is gonna have the resources to have a full triathlon uh, on their uh, campus, but it provides lots of um, different ways for you to uh, create that experience for your students and in a pretty simple way. There is portions that focus on setting goals, creating a personal training plan, doing a personal fitness assessment, the activity mechanics of running, um, biking, swimming, cross training. So we've got yoga in there, which obviously, um, being a yoga instructor myself, I would say that could be a, a, a a unit unto itself. Yoga has tons of benefits, including being a great cross training um, activity to help us um, uh, avoid injuries and to make sure that we're, we're strengthening our body in a balanced way. But it's also got lots of great uh, stress and relaxation techniques included in it. It can help us strengthen our lung capacity. It can help us strengthen mental fortitude and uh, mental well-being. So um, yoga is included in this unit, but of course you could take that as inspiration to do a whole nother unit on its own. And then also included in this unit is some suggestions and ways that you can set up um, a final mini triathlon. So the activity that I'm going to highlight today is uh, called a run, swim, bike circuit. And this is um, activities that can be done as a circuit within your gymnasium. This can be done outside. This can be done at home with very minimal equipment to have the students train or enhance um, the movements that are needed to participate in those activities. So check it out. Chessa. Thanks, Scott. So again, everyone, thanks very much for choosing to uh, pop in and check out our presentation. Uh, we're really glad that you were interested to know a little bit more about us and what we have to offer. So again, just a reminder, reach out to us at any point in time, whether it's through social media, through Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or Instagram. Uh, at EverActiveAB is the handle to use. 
Otherwise, you can connect with either one of us in Edmonton or Calgary, either through the info at everactive.org or by using my personal email or Scott's personal email. We really want you to reach out to us. We're here to support you. We know that there's still probably a lot unknown with what we're about to get into for 2020, 2021. So please, we are an ally. Let's work together and let's just make this the best experience for ourselves as well as for our learners.